So the question is, why would we track interfaces in HSRP? Well, let's find out. If we take a look at the topology right here, we have two routers for redundancy. And then on each side of these routers, we have a subnet. So over here, we have the 192.168.1 subnet. And then over here, we have the 192.168.2 subnet. This is all layer two on each side, um, right up to the layer three interface on these routers. So the switch all the way to the PC. So that means that the each PC will use the router's layer three interface as its default gateway, or more specifically in this case, since we're running HSRP, the router's virtual uh, IP address as its default gateway. So PC one will be using 192.168.1.1 as its default gateway. PC two will be using 192.168.2.1 as its default gateway. Uh, router one is active for both. And with that being said, we should have full reachability. So let me open up PC2 and go ahead and ping PC1. So we'll be pinging 192.168.1.10. So the traffic should be forwarded over here to router one and then over to PC1 and then return traffic should return uh, back to router one and then down here back to PC2. And we have full reachability. So the question of, well, why would we want to track interfaces well, let's say something like this happened. What if gig zero, zero, the, this link just went down. So we're gonna delete it. It just went away, the interface on router one went down. So now what? So we have another path over here to PC one. So it should be good, right? Well, let's try to ping PC one. Well, why are we getting an ICMP unreachable message? Well, that's a good question. Let's take a look at what's going on with router one and router two. So we'll issue the do show standby brief command. We see on router one gig zero zero. Well, we don't know what's going on because that interface went down. All we know is that router two stopped receiving HSRP messages. So it assumed the state of active, which it should be. So all traffic from PC one coming down through here to try to get to another network, such as our 192.168.2 network is going to be forwarded to router two because this interface between router one and switch one failed. However, if we look over here on router one's gig zero two interface, we see we're still active. That's why we're getting that ICMP unreachable message because once the packet gets to router one, router one is saying, I don't have any way to get to this destination. So it sends an ICMP unreachable message. So this right here is exactly why we would want to track interfaces in HSRP. So that way we can say hey, if this gig zero zero interface goes down, why don't we just have gig zero two take a break and we'll have router two take over for that as well. And we do that by decrementing the priority. So if this link right here went down, we would say, okay, so if our default priority is 105, for instance, which it is in this example, we could say, all right, we'll track gig zero zero and then on gig zero two say, hey, if this goes down, decrement the priority 100, which will leave a remaining priority of five. Five is much lower than the default priority over here on router two, which is 100 with the preempt command set, which it is, uh, that would mean that router two would take over as active on gig zero slash three. So let's go ahead and try it out and see how it works. And this would be the opposite as well. So we would also track gig zero two and decrement the priority on gig zero zero as well, should that uh, also have a problem. So we'll just say track one interface gig zero zero line protocol. 
in track two interface gig zero two line protocol. Okay, both tracking objects should be up because both interfaces are up and they are. So let's go ahead and configure this under the uh, interfaces and plug this into the standby group for HSRP. So we'll say gig uh, interface gig zero two. And by saying, hey, look at gig zero zero, which is now track one. If that's down, decrement the priority. So gig zero two is in standby group two. So we'll say standby two and then track one, because remember we tied gig zero zero's line protocol to track one. So standby two, track one, decrement 100. And then we'll do the same thing on gig zero zero as well. So we'll look at what's going on with gig zero two, and if it goes down, we'll decrement its priority by 100 as well. So this is standby group one, so we'll say standby one, track two. So track two is tied to gig zero slash two, decrement 100. And then again, for this to work, you will need the preempt command set. So if we look at either gig zero one or gig zero three over here on router two, we'll see that we have preemption enabled. And that just says, hey, if, the, if there's a priority change and my priority is now higher, essentially takeover is active for that interface. All right, so now that we configured the interface tracking, let's see what happens when we take down gig zero zero. We see that now router two is active for both gig zero one and gig zero three. And we are in, well, we're in the init state for gig zero zero because that interface is down, but we are in standby. And if you look, the priority changed down, it's, it's now five from 105. So now that we've tracked the interfaces and we simulated that inter interface failure again, or that link failure, let's see if we have reachability from PC two to PC one. And we do. So let's connect this back really quick. And since we're tracking all interfaces, the opposite should apply as well. So if we take down gig zero two, track two will go down. And since we set that command on router one's gig zero zero to decrement the priority 100, if it sees that, it's going to flip this to become active over here in router two. So we should still have reachability from PC two over to PC1 and from PC1 to PC2. I hope that was an easy to understand example. If you have any questions, you can reach out and let me know. I'd be more than happy to uh, help out. And that is it for today. That is why you would track interfaces in HSRP. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.